If you're ever wondering what it's all about It's crooked politicians with their tongues hanging out Taking money every time the corporations are handing out So the rich keep getting richer and the poor can do without I think that we have to be very vigilant about what's happening now because I think there is a movement and a narrative not just in America but across Europe that's very racist, pro-fascist and that has to be an aspect of what we pay attention to. I'm sure probably most of us in the room know someone who voted for Hillary Clinton and we probably didn't ask them to own the coup in Honduras we didn't tell them they were responsible for the war in Libya. We didn't say that they had brought about the racist crime bill of the 1990s or the abolition of welfare in that period as well. We didn't tell them that if they were voting for Hillary, that meant that they approved of the deregulation of financial industries that led to the catastrophe of the last eight years. We have to understand that a large number of people who voted for Donald Trump did so holding their nose and voting for the lesser evil, looking at Goldman Sachs, the connections to the Saudi and Qatari dictatorships, looking at Yemen, looking at Honduras, and looked and saw this cretin, this creep, this narcissist, this horror show as the lesser evil. Some walked and walked and walked. They walked the earth, they walked the waters, they walked the air. Why do you stand, they were asked. And why do you walk? Because of the children, they said, and because of the heart, and because of the bread. Because the cause is the heart's beat, and the children born, and the risen bread. These fictions that the state puts out about the planes that go through Shannon Airport, that they're not armed, they're not going to a theatre reward, that's still the prevailing fiction and maybe we'll get a chance to somehow challenge that in court. Kieran mentioned about it, it's a, it can be a demoralising and a demeaning experience, and that's the whole point of it. Um, it hasn't worked with me, because I actually find it, in its own way, absolutely fascinating to come up so close to, really, the, the forces of empire, and to have a look at them closely in the face. It is a war when you walk into a courtroom, I find. There's a propaganda war in terms of the, the work that has to be done to put those arguments together as to precisely why is it wrong for the US military to use Shannon Airport. Now we all believe that, but when you're in a court of law you have to put those arguments in place. You know, for people who are active, I think we have to mobilise trade union movement, the anti-war movement, but also think outside of that in new communities like LGBT rights and feminism has to be part of the movements that we try to mobilize against these fascist and racist. And we have to be very critical of neoliberalism and of the empire. And I think that's the lesson of Trump. Trump may in fact make more possible, make more strong, make more rich, is the connection between us and the resistance. The resistance in the Middle East, the resistance in Africa, the resistance in Ireland, the resistance in North America, the resistance in Mexico. The resistance around the world has a real chance. And what about the plowshares put their lives on the line? They planted potatoes, they'll harvest them in time. They'll send them to the victims as a token of mankind. From the runways of hell, they've erected a little shrine.